Iris, you just came back from the annual uh, World Bank Conference on Land and Poverty in Washington. What's the most important impression from there for you, and what's the key outcome of the conference? Well, I think these four days were um, the greatest opportunity ever for stakeholders um, working on land governance to come together, exchange the latest on evidence and research, and also to forge technical partnerships to move forward. And I was very pleased that I think for the first time ever, there was a huge number of participants from the Global South, both government and non-government, And they actually also started talking much more closely south to south, which is something that we want to promote. And for donors, that is also an important element to support. The Global Expert Group on Land Indicators met in Washington as well. The question would be, why is it really that important to have indicators and targets on land altogether? Well, if we've learned one thing from the Millennium Development Goals, I think if we want to deliver on better land rights protection and overall better land governance, we need a target and we need an indicator on that. And I'm quite um, pleased that the Global Land Indicator Initiative actually did agree on a proposed target and a proposed indicator, two proposed indicators, to measure this land um, rights target And I think it is a very useful compromise. It's based on months and months of researching the evidence of what is already out there, what's working well, and what might be politically acceptable, which is very important because we need to consider this is going to be a negotiation process. Yeah, I have one question about that uh, universal applicability of the, of the uh, targets. How has that been managed? And is it... The second question, follow on to that, would be, um, isn't there an over, over attention to measuring things to finest scientific detail? Wouldn't it be good enough to, to stay on a broader level to just make political agreements? I think the target is sufficiently generic to be valid at the um, global level. And it's broken. it can be usefully broken down into sub-indicators to take um, care of specific national context, and I think that is the important thing. Um, it's, it's, it's politically appropriate to use this level of indicator, but um, as you may know from the World Bank initiatives and other, other research work, there is a host of at least 80 indicators underneath um, those, those proxy indicators, which could then be specified at the concrete regional, sub-regional, or national level to measure specific outcomes in line with the national context and still have the opportunity to aggregate that into a, into a, a negotiated and agreed um, global target. The platform hosted a session at the conference, and in that you introduced a new partnership to secure tenure rights and to promote responsible investment for food security in Sierra Leone. Uh, why is that important, these kind of agreements, and to whom is it important? We're quite pleased that Sierra Leone has now joined. Um, in the first half year of these partnerships, we have really confirmed proof of what we expected these partnerships to deliver. That is to galvanize support um, for better land governance, and there are quite a number of countries That, that need this support and that are increasingly showing interest and ownership in, in, in delivering. And uh, th that is a demonstration, the partnership as such is a demonstration to donors that um, governments are really moving on, on what they're promising and that also unlocks funding that these governments need to do um, major, re major reforms. Um, what I also think is a good byproduct is the better, the improved coordination among donors with governments and with non-governmental stakeholders through this partnership agreement. And last but not least, of course, it locks all the partners in the partnerships into a very rigorous accountability. Uh, we always have this question about the, the importance for donors. Um, what is the vision for donors? Um, you had a meeting of the Global Donor Working Group on land. And that was great because the conference as such opened a huge opportunity um, for donors to engage where there is a strategic window at the moment. An increasing number of large companies are seeing a point in thinking about how they go about land-related investment and they see not everything is working so well and very often it's not working as all, at all as their government counterparts promised them it, as it, it would 
when they come to the grassroots. Now, we have the voluntary guidelines on, on, on land tenure. We are soon going to have the principles on responsible agricultural investments. And governments are saying, yes, we see the point. We are committing to doing better. But how do we do that? I mean, NGOs are helping us to see what we have ignored so far, what we was not on our horizon. Now we are committing, but we urgently need support to deliver, and we need an operational, operationalization of principles and global guidelines as the voluntary guidelines on land are, because you can't implement them as such. And that's, I think that's a huge opportunity for donors to engage and a coalition of a willing help forge these coalitions and fund where funds may be needed. That's one of the opportunities. But at our Global Donor Working Group meeting last Friday, we also discussed our vision for the next three years. And I'm quite pleased to say that we came up with a range of, of um, priorities that we agreed to take forward. And one, as I already mentioned, is to work much more closely and robustly with the private sector, but also to move beyond the voluntary guidelines, the RISE, and what other principles there may be, and to... Um, flesh out a vision of an industry-wide standard. And we also discussed how donors can contribute towards getting there. We also prioritized work to join up the dots. That is, on the one hand, to continue our, um, our better, improved coordination at all levels for donor support and, and align our, our funding and maybe even engage in more joint funding. But on the other hand, also when you look at all the technological innovations to for um, innovative um, spatial mapping of rights, for registration, fast-tracked registration of community land rights. You have a lot of great pieces to the puzzle, but at the moment they're not joining up to a better complete picture. And a third priority was to flesh out, widen, and deepen the partnership concept that we discussed earlier, to, um, to continue with the GA partnerships, but also to expand them to be more international, to not just be um, restricted to the G8. And we have quite a few in expressions of interest from other donors as well, to, um, and to pull in um, the civil society world much more intensively and to see where the collaboration potential is with um, the corporate world. So these are three top priorities for the next three years, and I'm sure they'll keep us very busy. Thank you very much. Thank you.